Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to our second video in our series on aggregate supply side policies. Today we're going to be talking about aggregate supply side policies and how they impact the three domestic macroeconomic goals, kind of tying in a little bit loosely to what we talked about last time and just bridging on to what we're going to talk about next lesson, which is about the four of the main tools that the government uses to try and achieve improved aggregate supply or increased productivity or productive capacity through um, education and training, research and development, subsidies and infrastructure. Ending. So let's get right into it. So where this falls in line, it's kind of a bit of a mix of the key knowledge dot points. So basically it's about how AS policies impact the achievement of the domestic macroeconomic goals. Um, when we talk about it next time, we're going to tie in each of these um, four things directly to it, but we're going to talk a little bit more generally about how aggregate supply side policies help achieve these domestic macroeconomic goals. So um, Let's have a look at it. So AS policies and the stability in the level of domestic economic activity. So first up, um, AS policies and the goal of low inflation. What I've done here is try to also give a very simple definition for each of the goals as we go along. Um, over time, I've tried to construct the shortest definition possible that VCAR would like. I uh, no guarantees that VCAR will still like it, but um, this has always worked for me in the past. So Aggregate supply side policies are primarily focused on increasing our productive capacity. And the goal of low inflation is for the general level of prices to be rising um, 2-3% on average over time. As I always like to stress that on average over time is incredibly important um, to getting full marks for this. Some people say 2-3%, but it's not that it's on average over time or on average over the business cycle. So that just means that um, we might have inflation at 4% um, one year and one percent the next, and that's fine because that's going to average out to around about that goal. Um, and so when we increase our productive capacity, this can lead to lower um, average cost of production for businesses, which can then be passed on as lower prices, which therefore decreases cost inflation. So an example there, if a business implements new technology, they can lower their average cost of production because they're paying less in labor, and that can be passed on as lower prices to consumers decreasing cost inflation and decreasing the overall um, inflationary pressure in the economy. Um, and that's kind of all aggregate supply side policies are to create non-inflationary um, growth. And so aggregate supply side policies, if effective, are never going to lead to inflation. They're always going to ease inflation. And it's usually going to be about easing cost inflation because it's going to be about lowering the cost of production or lower average cost of production because of improved efficiency overall. Goal of strong sustainable economic growth. So the goal of strong sustainable economic growth is the highest rate of growth possible without causing unacceptable inflationary, environmental, or external pressures. Usually measured at three or three point five percent of GDP growth per annum or per year. Um, aggregate supply side policies aim to increase our productivity. So such as um, research and development or education and training tend to try and make us more productive and get more output per unit of input, which can lead to an increase in our overall productive capacity and production, therefore increasing our economic growth. So if we are producing more per year, we have economic growth. It's as simple as that. If aggregate supply side policies are effective, there will be higher rates of economic growth. That will be about following the logic of that. So for example, if you have successful research and development, and there may be increased efficiency in the workplace and a lower average cost of production, this leads to an, um, more output per unit of input, means that there is higher rates of production there are higher rates of production, there's going to be higher rates of gross domestic product, and therefore increased economic growth. So aggregate supply side policies, when used effectively, should increase our economic growth and help us achieve that goal of 3.5% GDP growth per annum. And then lastly, uh, for full employment. So the goal of full employment is the lowest rate of unemployment possible, with only around 4.5% natural employment existing which is sometimes referred to as the non-accelerating inflationary rate of unemployment, or NIRU. You may see it pop up from time to time, but that first sentence is all you really need for the goal of full employment. So aggregate supply side policies can go either way. They can either positively impact full employment or negatively impact it. So sometimes it will negatively impact it because aggregate supply side measures can create structural unemployment, as workers can be replaced with technology to lower their production costs. That is a negative for achieving the goal of full employment. However, alternatively, sometimes increases to our productive capacity can lead to firms employing more labor resources, 
to maximize production. So an example with that, if there is an increase in infrastructure spending, the government needs to then employ labor to create that infrastructure. And so that creates more employment in the short term through creating the infrastructure. And then hopefully in the long term by the extra, by the increased demand for labor that that new infrastructure will create. Um, little brackets there, if you haven't seen, um, I smell a discuss question because there's two different impacts. So if I was in my class, which I am not, but my students are, I would probably ask a discuss question about what impact aggregate supply side policies, um, discussing what impact aggregate supply side policies could have on the dollar for employment. And you'd be expected to talk about both of those things. And if you don't, you will not get four marks. Little heads up there as a bit of a hint. Then lastly for the day, we've got aggregate supply side policies and living standards. So the main purpose of aggregate supply side policies is to improve our living standards. So general material living standards, which are tangible aspects of life um, that improve our quality of living, should improve as the nation produces more goods and services at lower prices and or higher quality. And non-material living standards can be impacted positively or negatively, depending on how aggregate supply side policies are implemented. So for example, some aggregate supply side policies could lead to preserving resources and the environment. So for example, if we were using, that we had aggregate supply side policies get put in place to use more solar power or renewable energy. That would improve the quality of our resources and outputs and preserve the environment, which would be great. But others may consume our natural resources to increase our productive capacity. So for example, if we were creating new infrastructure, new roads, freeways, bridges, et cetera, that can destroy some of our natural resources and actually um, worsen the environment, et cetera, in the future, which is negative for our non-material living standards. Once again, multiple effects you could get. Whenever you're asked about living standards, always talk about both material and non-material living standards in the first place, but making sure to understand that there can be multiple effects will give you the strongest answer possible to get the best marks overall. And that's it for this. This is relatively simple. The next PowerPoint we're going to look at is probably going to be a fair bit longer. We're probably going to push out to about 20 minutes. So prepare yourself for that. That's going to be some riveting watching for you. Other than that, I hope this has been useful for you. It's relatively simple in how it works. There's less um, different effects that could occur compared to some of the previous topics we've looked at. If you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to send me an email, which is in the description below. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time to finish off um, VC Economics forever. Have a great day. Goodbye.